This is the Power of the America podcast, and today we've got a quick check-in with the U.S. national team coach, Austin Brown. Austin is a 105 kilo equipped bench press national champion who is just two weeks out from the bench press world championships in Sun City, South Africa. We talked about coaching at Open Worlds last year, the World Games, and the North American Regional Championships, and a whole lot more. Before we start, don't forget that we've got three big events coming up in the next five weeks with bench press world championships starting May 20 in South Africa, Sub Junior, Junior, Master, and Equipped National starting June 2nd in Arizona, and Classic Open Worlds starting June 11th in Malta. All of them will be streamed live and we'll post links in our Instagram story at powerthing underscore America. So make sure you're following us there. Thank you to SBD and Aleko for their continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com and become a member. Now let's get to this quick check-in with bench press national champion, Austin Brown. What is up? I've got Austin Brown with me here. He's the 105 kilo bench press national champion. And we're just a few short days out from bench press worlds in South Africa. How's it going, Austin? Hey, it's going good. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, it's going good. Getting ready to go out to, you know, um, South Africa and looking forward to that travel. <laughs> Hopefully it's not as bad as some of the stories I've heard. But um, <laughs> Yeah, you have to take some uh, tips from like Bonica. I think she's got the best tips on. I think she had the smoothest of anyone. Um, but yeah, like how many days out are we exactly? I know I compete a week from Saturday, so I'm actually, I'm heading out there next Friday or no, next Saturday night. Um, heading out mm-hmm. a little early going with my wife so we can enjoy South Africa for a few days before I have to compete and hopefully get some, some rest in. So not far out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it'll be, uh, June, uh, is it, oh, whoops, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong, I'm on the wrong list here, but, um, it starts when the 21st, Yeah, the 20, I think it actually starts the it's the 20th through the 27th. Um, okay. Yeah. 20 through the 27th. So we're talking like, yeah, we're less than a week out from the yeah. start of bench press worlds. So man, that's exciting. It's been a long time coming. I know for the bench crowd, the bench, the like bench specialists, like this is a date you must've had circled on your calendar for a while is bench press worlds. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely was. Last year was a little weird at being in Kazakhstan and, um, I know a lot of us opted not to go. Um, I was one of those. I didn't make the switch over to PA until after bench Nats, but um, so I didn't get to go to that one. And then of course, Lithuania the year before I didn't get to go to, even though I was invited because that was chaos. So I know Mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. It's a good location. The wife's actually excited to go to this one. So. (laughs) Oh, really? You're bringing her out with you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. She's coming. So um, it's nice. We had to do the nice hotel because I was bringing her along, but um. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, not looking forward to the plane ride, but looking forward to competing. Got some good talent this year, so um, it yeah. should be fun. Have you traveled overseas a lot or for powerlifting or anything? Just for coaching um, with the equip team. I'm the one of the assistants under James Townsend, and we travel over there to coach. Um, I do extensive travel for work, but you know, mainly for, for any powerlifting, it's just been that. So it'll be my first international competition. That you're competing in. Yeah, that I'm competing in. Yeah. Nice. So were you in Viborg? Yep. Yeah, we were okay. up there. Incredible. Dem- that was a great Denmark, right? Yeah, Denmark. Yeah. It was it was wild, you know, because it gets dark so early there. And I, I wasn't expecting that. I actually got like really sick when we were there. Um mm. I was rooming with Mike Steinmetz and he basically would just like come in and grab his stuff and leave because I was like deathly ill for a few days. Uh so not the fondest memories of that, but it was good lifting, you know? Well, that's the opposite of like everyone who I've spoken to that who was at Denmark was just like, it was amazing. The food was amazing. Yeah. The setup wasn't like the crowd. It was like kind of a stadium style seating and everything and immaculate facilities and everything like that. So yeah, um, it wasn't the facilities to- <laughs> that gave me the, that gave <laughs> me the bad taste in my mouth. It was just, me yeah. sick. no, it was a great venue, uh, especially for the, you know, like IPF me, they really stepped it up there, but yeah. Uh, and the food was great, the breakfast. The only thing is, like, as a coach, we didn't get done coaching until late. Mm-hmm. And finding food that late was a – that's always a difficult thing so, when you go internationally. So was it a food poisoning situation or was it more mm-hmm. just, like, a flu or something? You know, I think – I really think I had, like, the flu or something. Um, yeah. I was just holed up, and I just decided to sleep for, like, 48 hours. Um, mm-hmm. So I just passed out, didn't wake up, finally woke up and was like, all right, got to get back to coaching. Um, yeah. So. I mean, that travel does that, like, you know, you travel a lot for your job and everything, like it wears down your immunity. And then, you know, you get somewhere far overseas, especially with a lot of time zone changes and you just feel sluggish for days. Like, I mean, there's just several days and then 
Um, depending on where you're going, I, apparently it wasn't a problem in Denmark, but like a lot of places, if you eat the food, drink the water, stuff like that, like you're going to get a full like digestive reset going mm -hmm. on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's going to like knock you back a couple of days too. So, but yeah, that's cool, man. Um, so speaking of being an assistant coach uh, for the equip team, um, tell us uh, like what all the different roles that you have in power team America. Sure. So I'm, um... As a coach, I'm an assistant coach on the National Open Equip team under James Townsend. Um, I'm like the lowest man on the totem pole on that side. So we got me, Mikey Steinmetz, um, who's an incredible coach, and then Jeff Douglas, who's a legend in the game. And then James is kind of leading us. And then we're doing these cool. silos now. So like if you're on the Open Raw team, you're going to have one of the assistant coaches as the head coach on the NAPF team. Mm -hmm. um that way it's all in the same system to where if you've been in a couple napfs and you get called up to the open you're used to the system mm -hmm. so now i'm heading up the napf team as the head coach for the open equip side um and then bringing a couple guys down there with me to get some experience so oh man that's awesome like yeah. um uh, you're you're gonna be the head coach down there in the cayman islands it's not a bad place to be a head coach <laughs> <laughs> James and those guys are like, man, this guy is a low man on the totem pole and he ends up with like the best job that you can get out of all of us. Yeah, um, I think I did end up with a good, the good straw on this one. Yeah, spend a week in the Cayman Islands, spend, spend a week in uh, like a luxury resort in South Africa. Um, and then we'll see what the situation's like going to be in Lithuania later this year, you know? Yeah. Because uh, yeah. I think that's where the open equipped uh, worlds is. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, Lithuania. Nice. So talking about coaching on the equip side, mm -hmm. um, because a lot of our listeners and stuff are, you know, on the raw side of things. Um, yeah. Talk about a little bit, like, what are some of the differences and and what are some of the things like, because like you guys have four coaches um, for that equip team, um, the open equip team for worlds, but you guys have to do a lot of stuff. Like you're wrapping, you're getting people in shirts, you're getting people in squat suits and stuff like this. So just tell us a little bit, like I, I had my first experience watching equipped back in Orlando last year. Oh, yeah. And I mean, and I've seen Burford running around there and at high school nationals this year. And it's just like, man, you guys have to work way harder than, than raw coaches. Yeah, it's we have more of an impact whenever you get on the equipped side. Right. And there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. I think it's more nerve wracking to be an equipped coach than it is for me to compete, you know, because mm -hmm. someone's trusting me. Right. Like they put in the work and now it's it's my time. So. From a coaching perspective, we kind of have a setup where James runs everything at the top, right? He's like, he's saving in this thing, you know? Um, and he's he's handling all the strategy. He's handling what are the other lifters doing? What do we need to do? So he's handling a lot of that high level, but then he needs people like me, Mike, um, to come in and just do the dirty work, man. Just wrap knees, make sure that that lifter is 100% comfortable. You know, don't, mm -hmm. don't pay attention to what's going on out here. I got that. Mm -hmm. You just handle that lifter. If they need a water, go get them, you know, like, you are their handler, you know, um, make sure they're comfortable. If they got issues, handle them. And then him and Jeff, you know, Jeff also gets in the weeds too, but him and Jeff are kind of the high level strategy guys. Um, and then also just to have different people, we all wrap differently. Um, we all handle differently. So we like to have a couple different flavors there. So we don't get burned out. Like you said, it's, it wears on the coaches a good bit, um, you know, handling these lifters. So we want to make sure everyone's fresh, you know, so we can, yeah float people in and out i remember seeing jim brown in panama last year <laughs> that poor guy. so he got the very i mean he got to go to panama and it was a fun time and we had a blast but i will tell you what like having him wrap everyone from juniors to open to masters over a course i think the equipped part of napf is like for like four days or something um and then that was after coaching the raw team for like four days you know all different age classes uh, age classes and everything like that as well that's when I really was like, holy shit, these equipped uh, coaches really have to do like physical work more. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Me mentally, you know, the game is the game. It's still powerlifting and there's numbers to be ran and everything like this, but just the physicalness of like wrapping knees and like getting people in their, in their squat suits and getting them in their shirts and pulling down on their, on their shirts and everything like this. It's like, it's just so much more physical than, than what you have to deal with in raw. Yeah, it's more fun, though, too, I think, you know, because it adds another layer in there, right? Like, mm -hmm. raw is great, but if you can coach equipped, you can probably coach raw. Uh, I oh, don't yeah. know if it's necessarily the the case the other way around. Not saying they're not great coaches. It's just a different type of coaching, right? Um, you know, you're Dude, doing a lot more. Go I ahead. wouldn't know the first damn thing about you asked me to wrap a knee or something. It would be like, no, you're in trouble if you're asking me. 
Well, it takes time too. You know, you yeah. can be a great. Like I started coaching raw and handling lifters for James um, Townsend out here in Georgia at like, you know, local meets and just kind of helping him here and there. And then it was yeah. like, all right, let's jump up and get you handling some equipped. And then, okay, you run these guys. I'm going to run these guys. And then I'm going to bounce back and forth to where now when we do like a local meet, James is running to the scores table and then I'm handling all the lifters, you know? So it's a, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, but it is chaos. And I think that's why it's fun, you know, because you're coming yeah. together as a team. It's a lot more of a team. We rely on each other a little more, which. And I mean, you, I think the other thing is like you, you, um, when you're coaching on equip the equip side, I feel like you make a more of a difference in the lifters performance. Like you said, if you, if you give them a bad rap or if you don't get their shirt down far enough or, or whatever, like it can really mess. They're relying on you a lot more. I feel like on the raw side, it's like, put my numbers in, give me a slap on the back and like, that's yeah. you know i don't you're not really gonna change how i lift too much right you know i mean you might if, know yeah yeah go ahead i was gonna say even if your timing's off whenever you're wrapping these right yeah. let's say you're you're wrapping them three out and those three happen to go quick and now the lifter only has 30 seconds on the clock and you got to get them out there yeah or you fumble a wrap and daytona and taylor la chapelle never forgives you for it these are things that happen <laughs> <laughs> tell us <laughs> tell us the story what happened so she talked about this on the spicy pl podcast and this is totally my fault right i was uh-huh I had competed the day before at bench nationals down there. Um, actually, that was the first time I won one. And James said, Hey, we might need your help tomorrow. Uh, big Lou might not be able to, you know, make it. And I said, okay. So he's getting me wrapping all these people. And then he's like, Hey, you gotta go wrap Taylor. And, uh, and Taylor is a savage. I mean, you cannot wrap her wraps tight enough. Um, oh, okay. And I was trying to wrap them as tight as I could. Well, I fumble one because my forearms were shot. And I was like, I look at the clock. We got like, a, they already started it. And I'm like, I got to finish wrapping this just raw dog, you know? Mm-hmm. And she's strong. She could have squatted it. But man, she came off of that platform. And the the look she gave me terrified. She's like, you know, she's like a, a 63 kilo. Mm-hmm. I think at the time she was 57 kilo lifter. She might still be. And terrified me as a 105. I'm literally twice her weight. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, <laughs> don't do this again. Um, so, yeah. And then after it was funny because one of the guys, a lightweight man, a guy that I was wrapping after goes, wrap me as tight as you can. I go, you want it as tight as Taylor? He goes, yeah. So I did it. And he was like, never wrap me that tight again. What are you doing? <laughs> and she said, I didn't wrap tight enough. So um, yeah, that was, yeah. She called me out. Well-deserved call out too. Cause I, I fumbled that rap. She's like, uh, you're fired. Uh, where's Jeff Douglas? Like, I need a guy that can knows how to actually wrap tight over here. You know, That's, yeah, it was like, where's Jeff or Mike? Why aren't they here? And I was like, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So- don't really. Did you wrap the, her knees the rest of the meet? Or I did, uh, yeah. Wraps okay. two and three went off without a hitch, but I, okay. uh, I think she 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 hit like a PR that day, and I think it was out of spite. Um, <laughs> it was out of a good wrap job. You uh, fueled it. You fueled I the fueled PR. It. Hey, whatever you got to do, right? Hey, um, that's one of the. Now you can play it off as like I I intentionally kind of messed with her wraps a little bit, got her hyped up, got her anger going, got the juices flowing. Um, Taylor is a star in the sport. I mean, there's yeah. no other way to describe her other than that. I'm so excited that she's coming over. Um, she's actually lifting in Scottsdale in yep. three weeks. Um, she's a 63. Yep. And um, so we've got a, we're going to have a stacked on the women's side uh, between her and Kimmy Johnson coming over. Um, Kelsey McCarthy coming over. We got like world champs, um, you know, up and down the roster now. Yeah. So I'm ex- I'm pumped for equipped women's side, especially. One of them that they're not quite as talking about as much because she was younger last year is Catherine Cargill, and she trains uh-huh. out in the gym, and mm-hmm. um, and she's getting stronger day by day, you know. But she's one of those with that same mentality of Taylor, where it's like this calm, steady, like don't mess with me, like I will, like yeah. very, you know, like simmering and like as nice as could be. But like, there's a competitor in her that um that actually her brother's going to be helping me on the NAPF team. He's also in, uh, he's a raw lifter, but he helps us equip and. Uh uh-huh. yeah Catherine's an absolute competitor and she's going to be one of those that I think she just turned 18 I mean she's and she was on our team last year so she's been with us uh for a minute uh, she's so she's not just coming tr- fresh off from USBI um this year no. but didn't she 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 either went to junior worlds or open worlds did you go to open worlds she went, yeah she went to open so her dad and brother came over um her dad also competes so th- actually they're gonna have the whole family competing in Scottsdale her dad brother and her wow um, and then they run all the meets here in Georgia now for powerlifting America too. I'd heard yeah. about that and I'm excited. It looks like they run good bro. meets. It was a 30 person meet and it was put on at a higher production value than any other federation that I've seen in Georgia. Um, yeah. I mean, it was ran nicer than the old state meets were in an old fed and it, just incredible. So they really put That's in cool. 
you know, they care about the sport. They don't care about the money as much. So it's not I've been sport. hearing uh, a lot of things, good things about them, a lot of positive stuff about the family and stuff mm -hmm. and having them come on board in Georgia and being able to run meets out of Atlanta, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Out of Atlanta. Yeah. So it's all, it all spurs from Jamestown. So we can get a little into that. Um, yeah, he's, my coach. he's the head coach of the, the U S team for, for open equipped. And he's, he's, I mean, he's been in the game forever. If you talk to any of the top equipped lifters, you know, who do you want calling your numbers on the national team? It's James. And yeah, he, um, he started coaching me back in 2015 after my first meet, uh, an old lifter you probably have never heard of named Brooks Conway. Um, me and him grew up together and I got into powerlifting. He said, Hey, you need to check out James. And, uh, so I did, I let him coach me for one meet and it was like night and day. And, uh, and then he got me in a shirt. I think I benched like less than 200 keys my first time in a shirt. I think it was like 400 pounds. And, uh, mm -hmm. and now I'm closer to seven, you know? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I was just sticking with James. Um, and then, you know, he teaches, he taught me enough to where I thought I could program myself, but for some reason, I, I think I'm Superman. And, um, I end up hurting myself when I do my own programming. So, so. you're back. Is he programming you now? Yeah, he's, I tried like a couple years ago, probably like five years ago to do my own. And it was like, this doesn't even make sense. I'll just have James do it for me. Cause yeah. I'm an idiot. Um, you know, I, I do fine when I'm programming for other people, but for myself, it doesn't go as well. Yeah. Um, yeah so he's my coach and he, he's kind of kept equipped lifting alive in the Southeast down here um, in Georgia uh, with his gym elite iron, which I'm repping today. Um, yeah. I like it. I need one of those. Yeah. Hey, we'll have to get you one. Maybe we'll bring one over to nationals and yeah, he's got a whole, I mean, basically the national team last year, a majority of those lifters came out of elite iron. So yeah. We have a great and, team. I, and I mean, he's, he's been the head coach before as well of us national yeah. team, I believe for years and years and years in the past, I believe. Yeah. And I mean, he's been uh, involved for 20 years at the national level. Yeah. And so like, he's really well known. So I think even people that aren't coached by him are like kind of you know, been influenced by him or coached by someone who's coached by him, you know, stuff like that between yeah. him and Jeff Douglas, they pretty much touched every single lifter and on the equip side, it seems like. Yeah. Um, and so does, here's a, here's a question I have. Cause I, I think we'll have a hard time getting James on the podcast, but you're uh, not, you're not going to get James. On the <laughs> I can tell you that now. A he's too busy and B so, like he, he goes, he wants to shoot it straight. What's the, you know, what are the numbers? Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. Like he just, you know, yeah. And he's he busy, right? Like, he, do, he coaches other athletes too, like, like athletes that are not just in powerlifting as well yeah. and stuff, I believe, right? Like athletes that are in football and other sports. Yeah. So yeah, he used to um, be at Gata a long time ago and that was where they did all the combine stuff. So back when I started with him, he was doing a lot of that. And then he shifted, opened his own gym. Okay. And now I think he has like a 50 man roster in powerlifting. And then he has all his like normal clients, which are mainly, you know, uh, high school kids, uh, some college kids playing football come home for the summer go out and train with him but yeah he coaches everybody so it's That's it's cool. a lot more than just um you know just power lifters and does he here's my next question does he lift oh yeah james lifts. he still lifts now <clears throat> yeah james always lived james is a, okay. a a conundrum of a of a man he um yeah he lifts but he likes to lift by himself and his whole thing it's all about like quality right so he won't lift if it's going to impact us in any negative way which means yeah. if we're at the gym and it's just two of us, like it's been on Friday mornings at the end of our workout, he'll work out, but he won't work out like while we're there. And like, we pay him for programming, but we don't pay him for in-day coaching. And he still yeah. does shit like that for like me and Will, because we've been on so long, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was asking him about bench nets and I said, are you going to go next year? You know, it might be in Austin um, for bench worlds. Like, are you going to go? And uh and I said, you should go equipped. And he goes, man, I can't. And I go, why? And he goes, because if I go equipped, it's going to take away from y'all's. And that's just kind of how he thinks about it, you know? That's so. that's totally the vibe that I got. And just from the interactions I've had with some of the people on the equipped team, I, I had a great conversation with him in Orlando last year, like shot the shit with him for like over an hour, probably. He yeah. opens up, um, you know, after the meet is over and you're having a few Bud Lights and stuff um, for sure. And so, um, but yeah, it was just, curious like if he's still lifting but he seems like that kind of guy that like he's always putting everyone else first and right. then never really taking time for himself to lift i mean he um, does though he trains in his garage okay. he has a state-of-the-art incredible gym you know and and but he trains in his garage on like all the old equipment because he saves the new stuff for the gym 
So that's just who he is, you know, but yeah, he still trains. I mean, the guy's still benching, you know, like 400 pounds. I mean, he's still an animal, but you know, at the, at his level of coaching and how he coaches and how thorough and professional he likes to be. Yeah. I always mess with him. I'm like, tag me in. Like, cause I'm still competing and I also coach. And he's like, man, get out of here with that. You know, like if if we're going over there, you're either going to coach or you're going to compete. We don't do that both stuff. Um, Because in his view, it's very old school and like, you're going to put more into it as a coach than a competitor. And it's better to do one thing right than two things half ass, you know? Yeah. It's, it's very hard for these coaches um, to actually compete themselves. I mean, especially like you all that are national team coaches and stuff like going to worlds and whatnot. It's very difficult. Like you, you wouldn't be able to compete at equipped worlds just because you got so much work to do for, for handling and for game day coaching. So yeah, let's say that's the reason I can't compete at equipped worlds. I just, I'm just too busy. It's not because I can't squat or deadlift for the shit. It's because I'm too busy. (laughs) But I mean, kind of, this is kind of a cool outlet. So I, I, that was a good question to ask him about, like maybe he'll do bench worlds um, because that would be something where, maybe he you know it's a little bit less intense you're not wrapping knees and stuff right i don't know we'll see we're we're trying to push him on it we're gonna have if it is in austin it's finalized you'll probably see the entire elite iron roster out there um next year at bench worlds and we'll come and try to flood the platform in austin so yeah 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 that's gonna be exciting yeah the rumors are swirling um power of team america might be getting their first uh world's level competition here in the united states which will be super exciting and we'll just see where it goes but um all right. Well, let's talk a little bit more about you. Um, this yeah. is our quick check-in, you know, with you. So we want people to get, get to know you a little bit, stuff like that. So tell us first, just kind of like your, your little bit, like a quick backstory of how you got into powerlifting, how you found powerlifting specifically out, you yeah. know, outside of just like general exercise. Yeah. So I've always trained through high school and, and yeah. you know, I was a, I was a football player. I blew out my knee my senior year and, uh, I was a good enough football player to have some like, you know, D3 offers and stuff, but not good enough to get hurt and come back. And what position, what position linebacker? I played, yeah, I played linebacker. I played outside linebacker and actually I played center just because I was mean. Um, And I'd cut block everybody. I mean, that was my jam, you know, small center cut blocking everyone fast. And then I I got taken out with a knee injury. So I think that's karma. Yep. Yep. I got, you know, so, so after that I said, okay, well, what can I do? And I got into like natural bodybuilding stuff. And that was cool um, just to see what I could do to my body. But the subjectivity of it, I was not a huge fan of. Right. It's like, yeah, you know, there's no like clear cut, you know, who won. Like, well, it's all opinion at that point. Um, Mm -hmm. And I don't like that. So I I noticed my legs were pretty small and um, I wanted to build them up. And I said, I got to get into something that will put some mass on my legs. So I started, you know, squatting heavier and deadlifting and. I always had a good bench and my buddy Brooks Conway that I mentioned earlier said, Hey man, you should do a power lift in me. And I was like, maybe. And I ended up just signing up for one and did it on my own and did pretty, uh, my cousin Reese Young was another guy who pushed me to do it. And I met James at that meet. And I think oh. I went like three for nine. I don't remember. It's on open IPF, but it was not a good meet. Um, yeah. I mean, it was really bad. I think I only benched like 340 or 330 or something like yeah. that. Yeah, 157. And um, yeah, you went, no, you did better than you said. You went seven for nine. Okay, seven for nine. Really but I mean, we it. cut way back on my numbers. And um, like, because I was wanting to do some crazy stuff. And I, James actually came over because he knew I was Brooks's friend and started uh-huh. meeting with Reese, who was handling me and was like, hey, back this number down. Hey, dude, you know, he started coaching me in real time. And after that, I said, oh, okay, man. I got to get with this guy. And uh, I was raw back then. And then I did a raw bench only meet. And I met all these monsters in these bench shirts. Um, God, it was, I forget the guy's name. And he's a coach up at Liberty University. He does like the unlimited multiply class stuff now. Um, But he was doing the meet. And and I I watched all these animals. And I was like, I saw some guy drop like 700 pounds on him and all this stuff. And I was like, I want to do that. Like, that is exciting. Yeah. Um, so I went back and told James and at the time I had a hurt pec, so I couldn't really compete. And he was like, let's try you in a shirt. And uh, so I tried a shirt. I absolutely loved the, the, the additional like layer of complexity to it. Yeah. And the skill level, right. At that point, it's not just who's the strongest it's who's the strongest, who can take the most pain and who can take the most pain and put in the most work to get good with their equipment. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, and then it's a lot of technique. Yeah. Yeah, it's like comparing like F1 and NASCAR, right? They're both yeah. fun sports, but 
F1 is going to be a much like, you know, it, it's a lot different than stock car racing, right? Like yeah. it's a lot more fine tuned. Like if you mess up a little, the stakes are a little higher. Um, yeah, exactly. So, and it's actually kind of funny because everywhere else in the world, F1 is a lot more popular. Um, yeah. <laughs> America and it's kind of the same, very oh, similar no. here. I mean, we're equipped is very popular around the rest of the world mm -hmm. for sure. So that's what made me love it, man. It was just like, this is hard my chances of dying are significantly more <laughs> it can go bad really fast. And, um, and, and that brought a lot of adrenaline and excitement. So that's what kind of drove me over there. And then I just started, I remember I battled at like 500 pounds for a long time, trying to bench it was, you know, 225 was 496 mm -hmm. and, um, battled there for a long time and just kept chipping and getting better in a shirt and getting stronger and, uh, just slowly climbed up. So that's yeah. kind of, you, I still do full power occasionally, but you bench two twenty seven point five in your in your first yep. equipped bench only meet, um, and so yeah, and that was six months after you did your first raw raw bench only meet, yep. and you opened it's for people who just want to see like this is six months difference in you know um, between these two competitions, and you open uh, sixty kilos heavier, yeah. 60 kilos heavier not 60 pounds yeah but yeah you you open 160 your first one you open 220 your second one yeah uh, so like that's that's gotta be fun like right like oh, yeah. and you're talking about like you know uh breaking 500 and everything like that and then boom you put the shirt on and six months goes by and you're hitting 227.5 on your second attempt so yeah i was one of those weird ones too where my body's built to bench you know and i always had a decent bench and um i took pretty well to the shirt but like there's other people who struggled through it. Dale McLaren trains at our gym and uh, that guy has like scraped and clawed for every pound he's gotten out of that shirt. And, but he's still up there in like the 600 range, but you know, his path has taken a lot longer because he's not built for it necessarily he has longer arms. Um, but I was built for it. So I, you know, I trained under some like legends when I came in, I mean, we had like doc holloway which another guy you're never going to find on instagram and he's a legend in the sport. but he's still lifting uh i remember the name or is he still lifting he's no he's so he just retired we're trying to okay. pull him back for next year for bench only um but i mean he's an absolute legend he's i want to say he was in orlando last year right he was yeah yeah, yeah. okay i think cool. that was so his that was last, meet. last meet okay yeah and then he he kind of hung it up so we always try to pull him back in but you know it's a lot he's getting older and uh but he's incredible. He's a good coach too. He doesn't coach, but like, if you get him to handle you at a meet, he's great. Um, we had a lot of guys out there at the time um, that were really good. You know, like Brooks was still in, in lifting and he was a great 83. We had Mark Freeman at the time would come through. These are all like forgotten names now. Right. Yeah. But at the time they were really good lifters. Um, and then Dale was a really great lifter back then. So we had this gym full of, you know, pretty stacked lifters equipped wise. And I got to learn from all these guys. Um, and, and it helped also learning under James, you know? Yeah. And now you can pass this knowledge on down to the next generation. And right. as an, as a coach, especially, and, um, you know, coaching all the different teams, like being at NAPF, <clears throat> you're going to get roped into wrapping some knees for some juniors and stuff, even though you're there to it. coach, you're there to <laughs> coach open. I mean, there's masters, there's, there's juniors, sub juniors, all that. So it's like, you're going to definitely be having some fun. Um, yeah. it'll be a fun time and you'll, you'll be inspiring the next generation as well. Like being, hand to hand with them and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, so that was back in 2015 when you started. Yep. So that's eight years, um, yes. eight years ago already. So you're kind of already like an OG in the, in the game, even though it doesn't seem like that long ago, I guess, huh? No, I'm, so, I still feel like a baby in the game. Right. When I came in, I was the youngest guy by like, you know, I was like 23, 20, when I was 24 when I came in Yeah. and they were like, you know, I was the baby and now I'm looking around and there's all this new generation and, uh, it's kind of weird, you know? Uh, yeah. But this is what we were aiming for when I started with James. He said, I don't care what you do at the next meet. I don't care what you do the next five meets. If you want to be one of the best in the world, which I told him I did, um, he said, you have to aim for 10 years from now. That's where we're going to peak you. You know, it takes time to be a champ. It's not like, unless you're a genetic freak, it's not totally. over. You know? Totally. You got to scrape and claw. It's a marathon in powerlifting. And I like to think about the next meet only. And that's why I hurt myself if I do my own programming mm -hmm. where James is doing a 10 year outlook. Like, okay. Like to me, this is my last meet ever. I'm going to South, you know, but like, yeah, he's still ahead three years. And like, well, where's, yeah. where are we going to be then? What do we hit, need to hit now? Um, you, you can leave, you kind of have the vibe of like, I want to just leave it all on the table now. Yeah. 
You know, right. He's like, Which is no, good no. from an athlete's perspective, yeah. but I mean, I'd yeah. much rather have an athlete who's like that than like, you know, always pulling back. Right. Totally. Um, I'd rather pu- pull the reins on somebody, you know, to bring up like a horse analogy, like pulling the reins back with a horse that's real flighty than one that's hard. You got to really kick them to get them out of the stall. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and that's, that's where you have James to do that. You know, that's, what's good. Yeah. So, yeah. He knows me healthy. better than I know me. I just, I get, I used to fight him on stuff and, um, and then everything he'd let me, you know, he'd give me enough rope to hang myself. And I, I blacked out under, you know, benching like five fifty. just dropped it, just, you know, passed out. And he's like, well, Crazy. you learned something, you know, I told you not. I'm like, no. Um, wow, man. So, yeah. That's why people who are listening to this, like, this is the kind of crazy shit that happens in equipped, man. People are just like black out in the middle, drop a bar yeah. on themselves, like so much crash and burn going on, yeah. like in, in, on the equip side. That's just, I mentioned it before when I was talking with Zen, it's just like the misses are so much more exciting on the equip side than they are on the raw side, you know, like yeah. you could miss it a lot of different ways. And you could look like, I mean, I saw this young girl in, in uh, at high school nationals, uh, on Burford's team. Um, I think her, her last name is Crutcher, Camille Crutcher, something like this. She dropped a bar right yeah, on yeah. her face. And oh, they yeah. had the safety set just high enough that it kind of like nicked her a little bit. Like she had like a little bruise and she was getting ice on it. And then comes back out. I think she might've got her next bench after that. And then yeah. comes back out and deadlifts and everything. And just like totally fine. You know? But you see people miss badly like it looks like an absolute catastrophe like if you were a raw lifter you'd be like whoa like you shouldn't even finish the meat and then (laughs) and then they just come back out and smoke it on their next on the next attempt like it's no big deal it's just it's very fun it's very fun to watch james always says shapes and colors can you still see shapes and colors all right we're good (laughs) keep rocking you know um because it does it'll do that to you and i I remember i dumped 485 on my face once um and Dale was spotting me at the gym and we had one of those bench blocks on it. <laughs> and I, I just dumped it back on my face. It was right before that first meet and he had to hold it up and like pull it off of me so I could get out from underneath it. And then, uh, and then I Crazy. blew a, a bolt out at, um, in the Daytona nationals back in 2020. Oh, I actually really? ended up winning that nationals. I came back and put a different shirt on, but on my mm-hmm. opener, I, you know, blew it out. It's just part of it, man. You just gotta, all right, where's my next shirt? Let's, you know, roll with it. And, okay. So when you said you blew a bolt out, a bolt is a shirt. Okay. A bolt is a bench shirt. Yeah. And it's okay, the yeah. only one that I really like. Um, I've tried them all. I love the people at Titan. I absolutely love them. I just don't bench as good in their shirts. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's the way I'm built or what, but um, I've always benched better in Enzer gear. And so, yeah, I, I started in a bolt and, uh, I've, I've blown one out. I've passed out. You got to make some sacrifices to the bolt gods if you want it to work for you. Okay. And that means bombing out of a few meets by getting choked out and passing out or blowing out a bolt, you know, it's <laughs> part of the sacrifice, but um, once you do it, it's pretty loyal. So <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just quick scroll through your, oh yeah, you have bombed out a couple of times. Oh, yeah. that bench at bench nationals. And that was in, a tough uh, one. Yeah. 2019. Um, yeah. yeah. So tell us about that story then. What, what happened on that one? Yeah, that one was a that one was a tough one. So Lou, um, I don't know if you know Lou at all. He's no. one of the guys under um, Cap up there. He's he's a big bencher. I went out there and I was thinking I was going to be able to compete with him. I dropped down to ninety three, I think at the time though, yep. and he yep. bumped up to one hundred five. But I said, you know what, I got a good shot here. Um, I was still benching in a Titan shirt, but my cut went really bad. So here's an added thing: whenever you go like raw cuts going bad, okay, we can bounce back. We'll drop a couple of keys equip cuts going bad we're gonna bomb out like it's you know what i mean you Mm -hmm. can't afford that like Mm -hmm. you just can't um because your gear is not gonna fit the same and that's what happened there i opened up at a weight that i had done for like a triple in the gym i mean it was light and Mm -hmm. it didn't go anywhere and we pulled the shirt down more and tried to get more out of it and it still didn't go anywhere and actually i lost my mind so bad in the warm-up room in the back because i was so angry at myself (laughs) they drug tested me and i bombed out of the meat (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> drug test like me. this guy's raging this yeah. guy is, i was like headbutting the wall i was out of my mind um you you are very intense i remember in reno um because yeah. you're such a nice guy like we're talking now like this is how, how you are in like day to day and like you're such a s- sweet nice southern gentleman you know and um but yeah you have intensity when it comes time to actually get out there and lift and stuff i you definitely saw you in the warm-up room getting fired up and stuff yeah yeah you have to i mean that's the one spot where we can let it out right yeah um, 
and if I want to get my mind right, you got to go to a kind of a dark place, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some some of us do. Yeah, I definitely I, that, do. It's what works for me, you know. Is I yeah, have yeah. fun until the meet. I have like you know just like dumb like pop rap plan, and it's fine. But then like once I step foot on that platform, and I'm about to put the weight in my hand, I just got to go to go to that place, and then I'm fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I lost it at that meet because everyone was going to Tokyo, you know, like. Mm. Uh, Will Thacker, another my training partner, Doc. They were going to Tokyo, and it was like oh, I don't get to go. That's um, Bench World, where Bench Worlds was that year. Yeah, and Tokyo was oh. everyone wanted to go to that, you know. Yeah, because it, it kind of blew it, that opportunity. But you got to make it, those sacrifices, man. Nobody gets out of this equipped scot free. You're gonna, uh, mm. you know, knock on wood. I could go to South Africa and bomb. That's just, you know, it's mm, it's yeah. part of the reality of what we accept on the equipped side you know yeah yeah bombing out is just part of part of doing business it doesn't need to be like it doesn't i i hope i don't right but you get up to that level it's part of the learning experience you know but in that case also that was the last time that you had cut to 93 um yeah. since then you've been sticking at, at 105 and that's probably going to be a little more stable you know like you yeah. said you're probably going to see more of these kind of bomb out situations whenever you try cutting and your gear doesn't fit right. It looks like you only have ever bombed out one other time. And that was a Palmetto classic. Yep. That was and, the, that was the time I passed out under the bar twice. Okay. Yeah. And I wanted to go for a third and James was like, you're done, man. Like, let's stop. Like you are, you've passed out twice. Um, <laughs> we can't, what are you going to do? You're done. Can't keep like, jeopardizing these spotter and loaders. <laughs> no. And like my, my mom was in the crowd and she was losing it. And, um, and, wow. and, and she's like, James, no more. And I was like, I'm gonna take one more. And James like, no, we're, we're done here. Um, yeah. You know, you learned your lesson. And that was another situation where he told me like, that shirt's too tight. We, we need to get you in a bigger one. Okay. When I bombed out, I mean, when I bombed out at, at bench nationals, you know, he, he kept telling me, look, 93, I know you like being 93. Like I, I felt healthy at 93, but he's like, that's not going to be a great weight class for you, man. You're too tall. You're not built for the leverages at 93. Let's, you know, if you want to be, like when I started with him, you want to be one of the best in the world. You're going to have to do it at a weight class where you have that capability, you know? Yeah. Wow. I mean, just right there between those two bomb outs, the, I believe those are only two, they're only, only two DQs that you have on uh, open IPF at least. Yeah. Um, shout out open powerlifting. Everyone go be a patron yeah. there. We talk about them on the thing. I put the link in all the YouTubes um, and everything like that, because, you know, we rely on this stuff. It's such a, a dream that we have it, but those two bomb outs, one, you're cutting and the shirt is too loose. One, you're trying to fit into a shirt that's too small. I yeah. mean, that's the that's the narrow window of equipped lifting of like, and you talk, you, you hear about it in Formula One and stuff like this too. It's like you're, you're, the car is in this narrow window. And if you make a tiny little mistake, you're off, you know, yep. there's no adjustment. I mean, you, you have to try to adjust on the day, obviously, so that you can yeah. make it work. But like, if the shirt is just way too small or way too loose, it's like, you, you better lower your openers or else you're done. Well, and then with it's like this touch. <laughs> then you can't touch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the, that's yeah, man. It's a double-edged sword, man. It's that's what makes it so fun and exciting about equipped uh, and, yeah. and even just equipped bench in particular. So. Yeah, no, it was, it was good. Um, so I've learned a lot, you know, through actually listening to James now and then, you know, my own stuff, you know, mm -hmm. battle testing it and, you know, going through and getting those reps at, at nationals last year. Right. Like I probably could have just taken a raw opener and made the national team. Uh -huh. uh, but you know, I was, they were, some of the guys were asking me, why didn't you just do that, man? Like get to South Africa. And I was like, this is a chance to battle test myself. Like I've traveled out here mm -hmm. to Reno. I've, you know, I've, I've put in the work leading up to this. This is another chance to get better. And I need all the reps I can get. So, I mean, that one, I missed my opener, you know, just technique wise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> miss your opener, miss your third. You got yeah. your 295. Yeah. Uh, so that third was kind of a, a jump based on that shirt, but I had a chance so Adam Mamola, I think you're going to talk yep. to him in another episode. Yeah. He, um, he's like a legend in the sport, you know, especially in single ply bench. And I, I never thought I would be in a position to where I could challenge him for best lifter ever, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. Like I was chasing guys, Mike Ferrantelli, who we can talk about. Um, yeah. Tim, um, God, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. He's the head coach out there at Midland. Um, oh, Tim Anderson. Yeah. Anderson. Yeah. Like these yeah. are guys who I was looking up to, like maybe one day, but, but Mamola was untouchable, you know? Mm -hmm. And I look up at nationals and I realize if I go up two and a half kilos, I can have a shot at beating them for best lifter. So I'm like, you know, like I've already secured my spot. Let's do it. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and yeah, and I just, I wrote it to lock out, couldn't lock it. Um, but it was still good. That was a tough one too. Cause I was also helping coach 
uh, mm-hmm. Will Thacker and Jordan Coomer out there. Oh yeah, you were working. You were working, man. I I, I was there. Um, I watched I watched all of this go down and stuff. And like, I remember the uh, like because James wasn't was not there. Um, no, not so one. you were kind of like kind of being the coach of everyone like you were kind of back there helping out everyone as much as possible and there's a few other people too steve patrensic was there yeah right? so so um yeah he had his stable and we were i was really just working with will and, and jordan but mm-hmm. you know james told me not to like hey i got this and my dad was out there with us he was on the phone with james so it was like james was there um but i i wanted to make sure they got their openers and once yeah. they got their openers and i missed mine i had to go in the back and go to my place and be like That's hey, right I, you guys are good now. I'm leaving the rest up to you, but like, I got to go make sure I can punch my ticket, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I remember um, that. I remember that's when you got to intense as hell and all that. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. That. I got to go there. I, I <clears throat> just part of it for me, you know? And then I remember at some point when the light bulb kind of clicked that like you could beat Adam for, for best lifter. And it was a, it was a whole, it was like, it's on now. I, that, was, oh, yeah. that was really cool. Yeah. I never thought, I mean, Adam's a legit Easton Schuster is another one. He's, hopefully going to come over to PA. He's another one I like battling with. He's one of those 93s that um, I just battled with him for overall weight because he's incredible as a lifter. But mm-hmm. yeah, him and Adam, um, you know, or Adam's just been a legend forever. So the fact yeah. that I, you know, have the opportunity, I'm like, this might never happen again. You know, like I got to try it. Yeah. Never say never though. Um, <clears throat> you, you'll have another shot at it here in about a week, you know, ah. so to see what's up. Um, so talking about, uh, nationals that we were just talking about bench nationals from this yeah. last january in reno let's go back to nationals in orlando equip nationals right. last year and tell us about kind of what happened there because it looks like you know you took like a token squat yeah. and dead and then you had a hell of a bench yeah that one was a nuts one so i was actually going to go into that one i get a wild hair like once every i don't know couple years where i want to go full power again and i can do it for one meet you know um but the wear and tear of that my back shot. Like I said before, my knees shot at this point, I'm just washed up and bench and deadlift. And I was prepping for that. I did the Georgia state meet for a different fed for before I switched to PA and I did pretty good. Um, but then I was getting ready for that. And I, I slipped a disc in my back again. And I was like, I couldn't, I, you know, like I would try to deadlift and I, I couldn't breathe. And I, like, it was bad. I blacked out in the squat suit after I did it. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm just going to go out there and do a token deadlift, token squat, you know, because um, okay. I already paid for it. Like I can still bench. Um, it'll be a- another opportunity to put my feet to the fire. Right. Yeah. But that one was crazy because we had like 15 lifters under James. Um, and I think we only had like. That's right, because we were getting ready for the world game. So I had to meet with Noah out there yep. the day before. <clears throat> and wrap yep, we did practice. So for people who know, Noah Johnson was uh, selected onto the world games team for last year. And yep. you guys did like a mini camp for him. Yeah. Right. Like Yeah. Mini camp the day before um, we competed. It's a Saturday night. We did like a little mini camp for him there. Get to know him, talk some smack. Me and Noah have a good relationship. We, he tells me how awful of a rapper I am until after the meet. And then he's like, good, good rap. You know, like it's, uh-huh, yeah, that's nice. me and Noah. And I'm like, yeah, talk some smack to me, man. Make it, uh, make it fun. So I thought you were talking about a different kind of rapper, which I'm guessing you would be terrible at. Oh, um. yeah, no, 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 knee rapper. Um, yeah. Yeah. Noah is one of those kids where he's, I can't believe how young and strong he is. Oh um, God. He's going to be more opposite than Kimmy in every way. In every way. So, but, but, um, but other than still, nice. They're both incredibly nice. Yeah. Those Johnsons like, the, like uh, Jason and, and yeah. I don't know uh, their mom's name, but man, hats off to him. They raised some good kids and some strong as hell kids. What um, did you go then? Were you at Birmingham and did you wrap yeah. him for that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So him and, um, and then Bonica, I didn't wrap her cause Jeff came out and wrapped her, but then yeah, we had Steve yeah. Mann. Um, and then we were supposed to have another lifter, but I think Heather. she got, yeah, yeah she got, got, I don't, I don't she, know what happened, she but she was sick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, uh, he, he hit a world record squad in, in your wraps. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we're talking about world games here. People, we said Birmingham, it was in Birmingham, Alabama last year. And yeah. um, it's something that comes around only every four years, like very much like a Sheffield type of event with the, um, you know, theater style seating and all that. And like people going crazy, like amazing high quality production, um, top of the state of the art, like custom Aleco racks like that they made just for that meat and stuff. We actually so, have those those racks. I, so, I, Cargill bought them. 
And so did they, they were using them in that meet they ran like last yep. week, right? That was on we the have one out of the lean iron. We actually train on and uh, he yeah. bought all of them. He was like, Hey, let me buy every so cool. And that, that whole meet experience was incredible. Cause you had like the athlete camp. So we were all together and the USVI team was there and we're, I mean, it's all us lifters. So yeah, we're in with them and then they have training time. So me and James would go over and meet with people to train or we'd go work out. Um, and then they had, you know, just like we would all eat together in the dining hall. And then you had the meat itself, which was everyone had their own warm up rack assigned. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we had every station had like its own little, you know, uh, set up with plates and its own deadlift jack and everything was custom for the world game. So, yeah, you talk about high quality. That was definitely like a Sheffield level, but yeah. longer, right? Because it was more days. Yeah. So, I mean, we were all there for a long time and the opening ceremonies were like, you're sitting in the infield and I didn't realize the stands would be that packed. I thought they were going to be kind yeah. of empty, but they were packed. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was a really cool experience. So cool. Um, it's super exciting. Um, you know, there's rumors going around. Can't confirm or deny. I'm not an official. About it. I don't I'm not an official person. I don't I'm not to talk about it. I'm not. Official if we person. don't talk about it. It's not real, but we'll just mention, you know, might be some raw lifting going on there next time. We'll see. All right. I'm fine with some. We'll put know. it out there. I'm we'll put it out some. there that there might be a little baby bit of raw lifting, but we'll see. We'll see. Don't want to jinx anything. Fingers crossed. Well, look, if we go 50, 50, right. Then we got to go 50, 50 on Sheffield. I mean, that's just a way to <laughs> I'm gonna get, let's bring out, let's bring Blaine Sumner out of retirement and bring him up here to Sheffield to spot. We just, we just got to get SBD to start making bench shirts and all that kind of stuff though. I've heard, Cause I've heard rumors. They have a prototype. Okay. Okay. Rumors, um, through the grapevine, but I don't yeah. think, I don't know if there's enough money in it. You know, that's the downside, right? Is they are. Yeah. Um, and but, but let's see, we're by having people like you and Zen and Jeff Douglas and Bonica and people get to know more about equipped. I mean, it could have a resurgence. Like I said, it's exciting. I mean, formula one is now suddenly super popular in the U S yeah. um, and it wasn't popular at all. Like just like five years ago um, in the U S I'm waiting so, for him to make a raw bench shirt. That's just like a cotton shirt that's stitched together like this. That just gives you a little, like the knee sleeves and we're going to yeah. still bring them over, you know, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. right. Like I sometimes just wear like a really small shirt. It's like, oh, maybe this is what it feels like. I've wondered why um, lifters didn't do that in raw. Like just wear a super tight t-shirt in the front. That's normal cotton. And it gives yeah. you an extra, whatever, two and a half keys. I yeah. don't know. I mean, you're probably doing more you like half a key, but yeah. Hey, half a key is half a key. Exactly. <laughs> that's the difference of a world championship. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, it depends on the weight class. Yeah. Um, but but getting back to that nationals performance, so yeah. you just took tokens and then it looks like you had some numbers in here. Did you just do that yeah. to, to time out? And so that, yeah. cause that's a big thing with equipped the courtesy of right. keeping that time in there so that they, they can wrap and they can time their time to the next time that they need to wrap someone's knees or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. So we had 15 lifters and, um, and Dale was going up in a pretty hard head to head in the one Oh fives with another lifter. So after I took my token, we just used my second and third to either give Dale more time or to throw the other guy off a little, you know what I mean? And yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a strategy. So last minute we changed my third to go right in front of him. So he's wrapped and ready. And then boom, you hit him with that. Um, I don't remember Dude. Or another meet, but yeah. I love that. So wow. yeah, you can really, you know, mess with people on a team status. And I mean, it's part of it, right? Like this is, yeah. you know, you make the national team we're, you know, we're there for you, but until then it's elite iron lifters, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. And so that's what we did there. And then I was actually in the back wrapping people cause we had like 15. So they were like, Austin, you got a squat. And I was wrapping people for warm up. So I ran out there and hit my 75 kilo squat and went back in the back again and started wrapping people. Um, yeah. So that was good. And then we went out and I had a really good bench day that day. I think I hit 310. Yep. Um, which is a PR now for me. And that was crazy too. Cause like my forearms were just like swollen from wrapping people, you know? And I'm like, I didn't have time to think. So I could just Maybe go that helped. I, I think forearm it made pump it. helps. It gave me a nice forearm pump, made the bench shirt tighter. Yeah. Uh, and then same thing on deadlifts, you know, it's just kind of took a token and focused on coaching everybody else up. So, but yeah, but let's not brush past that 310, 683 pounds, man. That is a hell of a bench. Yeah. It was a That's good massive. I mean, I don't even know what it's like to feel that in my hands for a deadlift. <laughs> I don't either. Hold um, it over your face. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. The only time I've had that much weight on my body was over my face. I've never squatted that. I've never pulled it. Um, so bench is definitely my, my top lift, but you know, yeah. it's everything. It just makes the technique more important. Every kilo you go heavier, your, your, you know, margin for error grows smaller. So 
you know, For sure, man. someone that you see miss like a 325 bench might be able to hit that once out of every 10, right? But like, yeah. maybe just not on that day, you know, or that lift. And uh, mm-hmm. technique becomes super important the heavier you get. So looking at, um, okay, and then tell me about how the rest of the meet went. Same kind of deal where you like playing strategy games and yep. stuff like with your second and thirds on deadlift. That's exactly what we were doing. On that one, I think we were giving Dale more time to where he knew. Mm-hmm. Um, because on that one, like if you put someone's straps up, and then you pull them off like it's not a big deal. You got to wait 60 seconds. Okay, I'm fine. Okay. Like, but in wraps, that 60 seconds sucks. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, it's all strategy. It's all games. Um, at least, you know, so whenever that happened, I was like, look, put in whatever you need, you know, to, to get so, there. I love this. So, like, you put in a number to jump. You drop down your third to get in front of this guy. Now he's got to wait. And he's already wrapped up and ready. Wrapped and so up now and ready. he's got to wait 60 seconds with the knee wraps on. Yep. Dude, what a cool element of the strategy. Like I never even thought of like, um, there's, there's stuff like that on the raw side, um, where you kind of can catch someone off guard or maybe get them out of rhythm or something like that, but it's not going to really hurt them that much. No. I mean, yeah, there's a certain amount of like you're hyped and you're ready to go. And then suddenly you got to like cool the jets off for a second and then go back out. But that's, yeah, you can that's adapt to that. like, yeah, but, but 60 seconds in wraps, like you're, you can't feel your toes after that. You're not gonna feel any part of your leg. Probably and you can't walk that. out there. You're just sitting there like, really? Like, I don't have time to rewrap. I just got to sit here for 60 seconds. This sucks. Wow, um, man. Yeah, I you freaking can love stuff. that strategy stuff. That's what makes it a game. That's what oh, yeah. makes it a sport and so much fun. Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's what we live for. Right. Is, uh, there's yeah. last minute, you know, you can mess with people with attempts. If you got two lifters in a flight, you can really mess with people. Um, so that's the, that's the fun part. Now, when it comes to benching, it's a little bit different, right? There's a little, there's still strategy involved, but um, yeah, a little less than, I, I feel like squats, you can really get in their head early and, yeah, uh, yeah. and really jack up a meat for your competition. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just that 60 seconds in wraps will really hurt you, but yeah, bench and stuff is probably not going to be as big of a deal. Um, I remember Burford was saying, in the warm-up room uh because it's a very big thing getting reps um done and then having your lifter basically you you stand them up and they should just be walking straight to the platform and getting it straight out yeah. to the bar that's ideal yeah. right um and i remember something happened in high school nats where um our the monster chase lawton was basically like got held up i think they misloaded or something and he was holding he was basically having to stand there for a minute in oh. his reps and i remember burford you know, and he hit it. I think he nailed that squat. And then he came back and he's just like, he, I was asking him about that. And he's just like, it's just, you have to adapt. Like you just have to yeah, do it. Good. Like it sucks, but you just have to know your legs are still there, even though you can't feel them and yeah. just, and just do it anyway. Um, so what happened in that, in that battle with, with, uh, Dale and all that, I know he ended Dale up making got, the- Dale got smoked. He got, oh. smoked. we did everything we could. Oh shit. Um, he got smoked in that one. Um, Dale ended up making the team though, but he did make the team. I knew he that, did yeah. make the team, but okay. it was like, it was off an alternate spot. Right. Okay. Um, if he would have won that, he would have got it instant in. And yeah, we, we tried to do everything we could. He actually had a great showing at national or at worlds, but at nationals, it wasn't as good. Um, and who was he going up against? Let's give, I forget the guy's name, man. He's from, he originally competed in Ecuador. I think I'd have to go back and look at last year's nationals. Um, oh, strong uh, lifter um Cisnell power is his instagram yeah handle. since L power um, yeah um yeah he's an awesome guy um let me pull him up here and look man that that meet is like so deep because there's so many different age classes and everything like that he is a ridiculously strong dude yeah, super ridiculous. sweetheart nice guy he yeah, so nice. he must not have been able to go to worlds yeah um i think that's what happened it was something with like uh this yeah. is all just what I heard and I'm speculating. It was something with a visa um, and a passport and it being in the American name or not, you know, and yeah. to be on, I know you have to have an American passport to be on the U S team. Um, yeah. At least the nationals. I think they allowed him to go down to the NAPFs so, though. Um, yeah. Let me just, yeah. Yeah. He was able to come down to NAPF for sure. And he kicked ass there. I think he's yeah. a North American champion. Nelson Martinez. Nelson Martinez. Yeah. Nelson Martinez. He's who I was looking at whenever I was healthy. And I was like, maybe I can chip him or Dale. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's an absolute freak. So he'll be there again, I believe at nationals. I believe so as well. And, um, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, um, got to hang oh, out yeah. with him, him and his wife down in Panama at NAPF. 
sweetheart people you know he doesn't actually rap very tight i remember jim brown was telling me i think he mm. raps himself i think he raps That's himself. probably why he was able to stand there for 60 seconds and still yep. go smooth with that squad yep there you go there you go because yeah he so, doesn't rap too tight and he does a different kind of rap like an x rap or something jim was telling me about um yeah. down there in panama it's so cool it's like all these little interesting details about it but yeah, he's a he's an amazing guy. So good. I'm glad we could put some respect on his name. But yeah, yeah. I don't know what his status is. Um, I I want to say he's going to be there in Scottsdale. I hope he is because I, think I love is. seeing him in the gym. He is a squatting machine, dude. Yeah. Like he just squats like a billion pounds. Like every time you just see, it's like reds and reds and reds and reds. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Jesus squatting out there, but it but he's like a 105, right? I think him and Dale have another good battle out there. Um. Should at least. So I'm excited. I'm actually going to nationals. So I'm going to, I land back here on like a Tuesday and then Friday I fly out to nationals. So from South Africa to nationals, I'm not competing, but yeah, we have, I think another like 14 athletes. So James was like, Hey, I need your help. Can you come out? That's I'm the cool, head coach man. of the NAPF team and we have a really quick turnaround. So like, yeah, I'll we'll talk about that for a second. So if you make the NAPF open team, the top eight based off the, the three-year Carpino, James takes right off the bat. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then from there, unless you, if you hit the qualifying, which is the top three, I believe, or no, mm -hmm. it's a five Carpino or above. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look it up. But if you hit Something that, like that. Jane, you're auto qualified and James takes you. And then it goes to that reserve list. And then mm -hmm. based off that, I get the next eight for the NAPFs. Um, and those invites are going to go out like within 24 hours, basically of the meet. Yeah. Because like in it's going to be a 48 hour window to accept or deny. So we're going to have an email going out that basically gives all the lifters a heads up. Like, Hey, if you want to go to NAPFs, you need to have X, Y, and Z completed. Cause you're going to have 48 hours to do it. Once we send out invites, um, because the turnaround so tight nominations are due, you know, I think like a week later. Yeah. Um, it's late. very fast. It's, it's crazy how this stuff works with like being able to schedule hotels and then keep it in the IPF calendar. So we have time. Yeah. Like I know it was like after Sheffield, like we had to, I think they had a similar, very fast turnaround. I remember Austin last year, the first year, um, we was very class fast turnaround for classic open yep. worlds as well, where they basically had to accept like two days later, but yeah, the uh, qualifying is if you win your weight class and you hit a Carpino five, that's right. And then, then you're auto qualified. And then the next, um, eight go to the NAPF team. Mm -hmm. so, and yeah, and, and that might not be like, so it might not, right? And that's, I think that's a common confusion. It's not the top eight from nationals because if you don't hit that Carpino, you go into the alternate pool. Yeah. And the alternate pool has the lifters from last year's uh, worlds too, you know? And if they're not yeah. competing, um, you know, so, so technically like Joe Cap could, if he switched over from, from, um, what's that called? USVI. USVI. Yep. He could use his total from last year and make the national team. So, Yep. Hitting that that five Carpino is is really important um, if people want to make the team on an auto qualifier. And what we're saying with that is that the the if you if, by the way for anyone who's listening if you go to the website and you click on athletes and then you click on national teams underneath that you can get all this information for all of our U.S. national teams. Um, and so we're on the open equip tab right now, and we're just talking about that. Um, and basically what you're saying, the reason why Joe cap could use his total, it's not just, you can use any total to qualify. Mm -hmm. It's you can use a total if you went to open worlds. Right. So that's why if he transfers in from USVI, they can take his total from open worlds. They can also take his total from world games because he right. was also at world games, which he didn't get a total, um, spoiler alert, if you didn't see it. Um, but like for instance, Bonica, if she wants to get onto the open equip team, and there's spots because people don't hit that Carpino five and win their weight class at nationals. She can take her world games total from last year and get onto the equip team. So right. it's really good. It's, it makes, I really like the system that you guys have because there's a little bit of flexibility built into it, given the fact that we're in like a little bit of strange times right. where like half of the American really good equip lifters are in USVI half are with us. They're slowly right. trickling over. We want to make, create a path where you can come over easy and still make it onto the team. Cause that was a big reason why a lot of lifters didn't come last year was because of world games. They all want to go compete in world games, but now you see right. a lot of the lifters that were competing in world games, Kimmy Taylor, you know, they're coming over now. So, um, right. because yeah. So anyway, long story short, but, um, 
if for other, for, if you don't know by now, if you've been listening to podcasts, NAPF is the North American Powerlifting Federation. It's our regional championships for, in the IPF. So it's like Euros. If you've heard of Euros over in Europe or the Asian championships, um, this is the North American championships. And it is a complete, like you want to think of something like mega Nats or like how the way the IPF worlds used to be where it's all divisions equipped, classic, all the age divisions, all in one week, all in like a long, super long action packed week. And this year it'll be in the Cayman Islands. So there you go. So and we're putting a lot time. into it this year too. I, you know, everybody, we really want to go down there and just clean house. I oh, mean, yeah. I want all golds. I want, we want to clean house and really put a stamp like, Hey, powerlifting America's here. Yep. Um, we're not going anywhere. U S is back. You know, sorry, the rest of the world, but we're, you know, we're back. Um, I'll tell you what we left with our tail between our legs last year. Yeah. Um, in Panama, especially on the equip side. I mean, the man, they, they mopped the floor with us in a lot of weight classes. Um, even on the classic side, it's been a meet that hasn't been super prioritized in the past for Americans, but we want to build it up to that level of euros, you know, where it's like, it's a big deal to get, make it onto the North American regional championship team. Um, the U S national team headed to the NAPF, like that, that's a, a cap, a feather in your cap for sure. If you make it on that team and it's a big deal, Ray Williams is coming. So yeah. on the, on the classic side. So that's going to draw a lot of eyeballs into it. Um, Mike T might be coming, you know, legendary game, yeah. uh, lifter who's done equipped and everything too. In the past, he's a world games competitor, won world games. Um, so, and then of course, all you guys talking about it, uh, coming over on the equip side and everything as well. So, and actually it's like, kind of could be like a little bit of a tune-up meet if some quick people want to do that and open world, open world as well. Cause it's a good time. That's the tough. The tough part is I can't tap into those. So if you're yeah. if you make the open team, the chances you make an NAPFs are really slim. Cause I gotta, yeah. I have to exhaust the entire list yeah, of yeah. alternates and then I can come back to you. Yeah. Um, so just know that I'm not passing you. <laughs> it's, you know, yeah. that's what we're trying to do, but we're trying to save you guys for the open team. Um, Totally. And yeah, it should be a great, a great meet. We really want to go down there and show out and, and have a good time. You know, that's what it's about. Oh, it's going to be like the most fun meet. It, it is an amazing, have you ever been to an NAPF before? Mm -mm. It's, oh dude, it's like, it's a whole different thing because a lot of the countries that go to it are countries that maybe they don't, they might have a handful of lifters that could compete at worlds, but they don't have the funding to right. support sending a whole bunch of people over to Malta, which is like really expensive, really expensive yeah. plane to get. South Africa too, to get from like a place like Panama to South Africa, you got to fly around different places and get there. Um, so they, they don't, so they, they focus on this. So a lot yeah. of these teams that are really, really strong, Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. Dominican Republic, Ecuador. Mexico, Ecuador. Yeah. I mean, Ecuador can come up in when it's oh, the years. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there's, there's a lot of countries, Honduras. I mean, like there's, there's a lot of countries in Central America, especially that are super strong. Canada, I think Canada like pretty much kicked everyone's ass. Like they bring a, they bring a pretty strong contingent. Ain't having that shit this year. Uh -uh. Yeah, exactly. I'll tell you, we're going to plant our flag back in the Caribbean. Um, yeah, man. I'm and, excited yeah. for it. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. So we're really like, and you get, you get international experience, right? And we have that silo now. So if you're handled yeah. under me, I coach the same way James does. Um, you, you'll, you'll be going through the same process, same form, same warm up attempt, same, same system, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, to where you're getting some experience of what it's like to be on a world team. So when you get there, you're not shell shocked. Yeah. And I mean, I think, I think it's going to eventually get to where our, all of our nationals being so competitive that you know, making it even on an APF team is going to be a very big deal. Like it's not yeah. going to be just sort of like the B team or anything like this. There will be studs and it will be yep. stacked um, for years to come. So I'm pumped about that. And it's cool to see, you know, that you're going to be there and we have, we're going to have a lot more coaches there this time. And um, just, you know, like you said, we're, we're coming to play this time. We're not, we're not like going to be messing around. Or 11 coaches there based off my count. I mean, it'll be, it'll be good. Yeah. A lot of support. Yeah. We'll have a lot of support. We'll have a lot of, we'll have some media people there as well. <laughs> uh, everyone wants to go to the Cayman Islands. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind yeah. of like the treat at the end of the summer too, um, after a long summer of um, other meets and whatnot. So, right. but okay. I don't want to take too long. I don't want to go too long. Yeah. It's supposed to be a quick check-in. Like I, I, yeah. I warned you, it, sometimes they go two hours anyway. We're calling it quick, but it, it's not that quick, but we covered a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, so quick, let's, let's do a little mini preview of, uh, S South Africa bench worlds coming up and Definitely. let's first, we'll talk about you and let's talk about Adam. Um, so you guys, Adam Amola in 93, you Austin Brown in the one Oh five, you're the two equipped open benchers. There's that's the full extent of our equipped open team. So 
how do you guys stack up and um, where do you think you guys are going to place? Because you're both nominated, I believe, in like fourth. We're both nominated fourth, yeah. Yep. Um, so how Adam Adam hit that number at 83 kilos. Um, if 272. You look back, yeah, if you look back at Adam's history, he's benched, I think he's benched like 320. He had the world record at one point. So mm -hmm. I don't know where his top end is. I mean, he could go in here and open up at 310 and put everybody – in the dust you know which um, by the way the highest nominated total um in that weight class is 300 right so if he can open at 310 yeah he's probably gonna win but i don't know what he's gonna open at i know what he's capable of and he's every bit capable of 330 if he's hitting on a hot day which is oh wow nuts yeah um i think the world record there's like 350 um by the ukrainian i forget his name he's an incredible lifter but yeah, Adam's every bit as capable. He had just cut to 90 or to 83 for last year's nationals. And I guess okay. he, he decided to bump back up. So everybody needs to be put on alert in that weight class. Your your chances of winning with Adam in there are going to be pretty slim. Um, it's, yeah. If he hits one, you you know, you're probably going to go home um, without that gold because he's he's one of those competitors and he's been around. He knows. Yeah. Um, you saw the Japanese lifter was actually posting like, uh oh, Adam's coming. Adam's bumped up to 93. I need to really step my game up because. Yeah. You know, you're not going to just like cruise in there on him. So, yeah, he's got if he hits a bench, he's meddling. That's the way I look at it. You know okay. what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, very good chance for gold there. When you go down to my weight class, like I we're pretty stacked here. Michael Gibson, the Great Britain, he he's turned in to, or 285. So he has the the world or the uh, the Great Britain record. But mm -hmm. I mean, he's capable of hitting in the 290s. I'm topped out at 295. There's no way I'll do over that. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Let everyone so, know. <laughs> so I'm just gonna stay right there in fourth. But then you got Oliver Dalkfist. I mean, I know he's really pushing to hit a 325. That's the that's the full power bench record. Okay. And he took a ride for it at the Euros and missed it. Um, but I mean, he his range is up there, right? He could hit 320. Mm -hmm. The Japanese guy, uh, Naoki Hasegawa. He's a young dude. I think he's like 23. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, he's young and he's hit 340 in training. So he won last year with a 322 and a half. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, but that's training, right? Like when you yeah. go across the world, you know, 325 could happen. And then uh, Tuman Jargal out of Mongolia is a legend. He has the full power. He was at the World Games. He set the full power bench record at 325. So, wow. He's very capable of hitting up to three, you know, probably 330. And I think that's probably what it's going to take to win is one of these guys, either Naoki or uh, Tumin Jargal is going to hit 330. I'll take my 295 and then um, me and Oliver will battle for third place as, as, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, uh, you got to have something more than that up your sleeve, I'm guessing. Since that's it, hit, man. I'm, I'm simple. You hit 310 before. Um, I was thinking a, you might a have a good day. <laughs> good day. No, it wasn't. You just said that you had to wrap a bunch of knees and you had to, you had to, no, uh, but that was local, needed, you know, the local needed disc. More laid back. I'm going international here. So, um, yeah, You're no, planning I planning on getting food poisoning. I might get food poisoning. You don't know what's going to happen, right? No, seriously, like in when you go equipped, we can sit here and do this, but yeah, like the chances of Oliver, Naoki, Tuman Jargal, or me bombing, or you know, one of those guys is probably going to, right? It's just yeah, part of yeah. the game. Yeah, um, yeah. and then when you get up to, Adam's class, you know, one of those top three is probably going to. So, yeah, both of us have a chance of meddling. Um, Adam, I think, has a chance of gold. We'll see if I can pull out a third to, to aim somewhere up there. Um, mm -hmm. But that's the beauty of, of equipped, right? Is like, <laughs> it doesn't you matter. don't know. You yeah, don't it's know. interesting. All these um, nominations then are pretty low compared low. to yeah. what compared to what you're saying. So um, I think we all have the same idea here. Yeah, kind of <laughs> nominate super low. No, just nominate like, you know, or, you know, probably these guys are probably going to open higher than their nomination, you know? That's exciting. Um, That's interesting. I will tell you, I will not like, just, yeah. you know, I will open where I can touch the lightest I can touch because I don't play that, you know? So if I can touch 280, I'm opening at 280, like, um, okay. you know, and I'll make big jumps, but like, I want to get on the board. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it's like, you know, just lead the pack. And, you know, if you get your first bench, you're leading the pack. You basically want it when it comes to bench. Okay. Yeah. So that's, the, right. that's basically where we sit there. No, that's really cool. And um, it looks like Japan is just like stacked in bench, man. Japan's always stacked in bench. Um, I mean, they really are. I modeled my whole bench press style after, you know, Japan, because they, they all bench, you can line up 10 Japanese lifters in a row. They all bench the exact same way. 
Um, and it's, it's incredibly efficient. I was actually looking forward to the 83 showdown between uh, Kadama. Um, and Adam. And- yeah, and Adam, but yeah. I think Adam, I mean, I really think Adam could have, you know, had 305 to 310 in his range. Um, when I was competing with him at bench nationals, he went in the back and tossed me a shirt. I go, what's this? He goes, that's my tight shirt. I go, what are you wearing? You know, he goes, it's my loose shirt. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you just beat me in your backup shirt, man. Um, he's playing yeah, with you. He's a, a legend. Um, he, he's trying to get you to go out of pocket, which he you did. Um, mm-hmm. and, and mission accomplished. But yeah. um but the Kodama, I mean, he's a legend in the game. I mean, yeah. he born in 1979. He's one, like, one of the older lifters and um, like just an absolute stud still here, nominated top, you know, him and Adam are like the OGs veterans. Yeah. In the and he's usually at 74. He's benched 300 at 74 and he's up in the 83s now. So, so I mean, he's going up eight. a weight class. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Adam traditionally benched in the 93s. He just cut down to the 83s. So Okay. That's why I was kind of hoping Kadama, you know, goes up and Adam comes down and we have a showdown. Um, That'll be sick. Yeah. Yeah. But and, still, it'll be, looks like there's a, a bunch of people for him to battle with anyway. And then like, same with you. It looks yeah. like Ukraine's got a lot of, you know, they're always good on equip, but they've got a handful of lifters, not, not in every weight class, but that's nice to see that they're coming back. Yeah. I talked to a couple of full power guys and I was like, why aren't, you know, usually we have a, a couple, uh, there's a Ukrainian 105 who's incredible, uh, Betty are. And I was like, why isn't he, you know, back in? And he said, I don't think we're going to travel that far. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty tough for them to travel right now. Yeah, so man, it's yeah. not if they can lift, they have lifters, you know, it's just, yeah. can they, tri- can they make that trip? You know, it's not in Europe. I mean, it's a far trip. And it's, I mean, they got a lot going on right now with the war and it's just, you know, it's just like, yeah, you can't be away from family and stuff. Like it's going to be tough. I, um, one of the, you know, the IPF worlds on the classic open best lifter, um, from, I believe it was 2019 or 20, I think it was a 2021 worlds is from, yeah. And Anatoly from, from Ukraine too, but he's back on the nominations. So no kidding. we'll see. And I've seen a little bit of training footage from him too. Looking like he's, you know, strong as hell, obviously he competed, I believe in, in like in euros and just had a kind of off, you know, off day, obviously he's just getting back. Yeah. But, um, but it'd be good. It's cool to see Ukraine popping up here on a lot of these nominations and stuff, but all right, let's um, who else would you want to mention like of, of your, your homies and stuff that are on yeah. the equip team. So just dropping down into like from there from to Masters one, um, mm-hmm. Luke Hannafin. I mean, his name's been around forever. He's an eighty three nominated first. Mm-hmm. His nomination is also, I think, kind of low. Luke's been in the game forever. Um, super strong lifter. Traditionally, I think he was ninety three, and then he dropped down to eighty three. So okay, he's getting a little older, but um, he's still got some insane power if he puts it all out there on the platform. He, he's going against an OG that's five five years older than him and yeah. they have the same nominated total from japan so we're gonna have a yeah. lot of J- battles with japan i have a japanese flag on my wall in my garage yeah and a swedish flag and a mongolian flag so when i train i gotta look at my competition um i like that i like it man it gets me amped up but yeah japan's stacked as always yeah. um so that's it that i really had in the in the the masters one when we moved to masters two it really kind of heats up so uh-huh. in the 105 um well, uh, to start in the 66, Steve P is actually the coach, the head coach of the U.S. team, and yep. he'll be competing. Um, there's only two in his weight class, and he's pretty, um, pretty. I think he's a 150 nominated total, and the, the number yep. one guy's a 162.5, so he could make a hit there. But then the real fun starts down here with, with Will Thacker. So this is my training partner. Um, we started training together when – we were right around the same weight. We benched both benched around 500 and James came to me and said, Hey, I think we're going to bring him in. Do you care? You know, I was like, why are you asking? Me? He was like, well, cause you know, sometimes I was like, fuck that iron sharpens iron, man. Let's go, you know, uh, bring him in. And yeah, he's an incredible dude. Great friend. We both help each other out tremendously. Um, and he's nominated at 245. He competed in Tokyo. Um, he's got a really solid shot of winning this year. So I, I'm hoping he'll bring home gold for that masters two one Oh five spot. Mm-hmm. And then Mike Ferrantelli in the one twenties is kind of sandbagging it here with his entry. He entered a one Oh five cause he would have bombed from nationals, but he hit a raw token opener. Okay. Mike is one of those guys that I chase. He actually is one of the original designers for the bench shirt that I use the bolt. Um, okay. He's sponsored by Enzer. He's got like 
seven different bolts that he's going to travel with. Oh my um, goodness. Incredible lifter bench. I mean, he was a full power guy back in the day and then transferred over to bench only. Uh, I know he was like a sheriff down in Florida, retired, got into a pretty bad motorcycle accident, like really bad. Yeah. And he's still back. He's like, ah, it's, you know, just got hit by a car while I was on a motorcycle and I'm good. I'm back. Yeah. So he's got, he could go, I mean, he could hit 600 pounds easily, you know? So mm-hmm. he's nominated sixth, but he could have a 270 day and, and end up walking away with a gold as well. Wow. That would be exciting. And he's, he's one of the older guys in that weight class. Mm-hmm. Um, he's one of the older guys in the M in the M twos anyway, yeah. across the board. So he's probably getting close to being an M three one of these yeah. days. The um, M threes. I just wanted to touch on those two real quick before we change yeah. the subject. We have actually some, some stout M threes here. We have Dana and the 93s. He's an assistant coach on the uh, national team. Yep. yep. And then Thomas Sinchik, who's uh, done about every meet that's ever existed in the past 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's been in it forever. And then, He's nominated 20 kilos in first place. Yeah. Yeah. And he, and that's like, that's probably an open, you know, I mean, yes. he's, so he's probably going to win. Yeah. I think he won best lifter out of the masters out there at, uh, at national. So mm-hmm. he's got a really good shot of winning that. Um, and then, you know, you go down Robert Keller's there, 120 plus, um, get his feet wet. And then we got All a right. really cool situation in the 74s with Michael Rodriguez and Daniel size. Cause they're, they're both competing raw and equipped. Um, and I, Michael, I guess he's really got his bench shirt figured out because he's nominated first and then five kilos behind him is Daniel. But then in raw, I think it's flipped. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two and four, they're nominated and, um, and Daniel's nominated number two. So yeah, they're going to have a hell of a week together. <laughs> yeah. I think so. You're right. Yeah. You no, gonna be... All right. No, I don't want to go on safari with you. <laughs> so no, um, I want to kick your ass. Like we got another few more days to rest up for the, is it, yeah. is equip going second? Yeah. Equip's going at the end of the week. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll be after all. So they'll have a couple days of rest. So yeah, that's pretty much it from the equip side, but, um, but we got some good ones there. I think that'll be fun to watch Michael and Daniel kind of battle it out. Um, totally. And then, you know, if all, you know, not hopefully not get too caught up in it to where someone jumps them, you know, cause yeah. at the end of the day, I want to see us out there as number one. It would be cool to get one and two in a couple of weight classes, you know, bring home some more medals. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, yeah, that's pretty much the the rundown there. Um, cool. CP, I don't think I missed anybody. Yeah. I think those are a lot of the main contenders, at least for sure. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the main contenders. And then the raw side, I'm not going to. Hopefully you have, you know, like Hayden on and he can kind of yeah. talk about raw a little bit. Um, I'm going to DM him right after this and get him on there, but we got to, we got to. Actually, one person I do want to talk about from the raw side is yeah. Mike Rosa, because this is going to be his last raw meet. No, I'm kidding. I don't <laughs> know. Dude. I want to get Mike over and equipped so bad because he's built for equipped. Um, and he's got like an over 200 kilo bench at 83 raw. I'm like, man, we could put you in a shirt, be pushing 300 keys, you know, yeah. bring you over to, uh, to the 83s. Um, yeah, Mike he helped me at bench nationals and I told him if he helped me, I'd give him a free bench shirt. So I gave him my backup and uh, I hope he's been using it. Cause I really want to pull him into equipped. He'd be a good lifter for us. You know, he doesn't post very much. I swear. I saw him do post like one flash of the bench shirt, like at one point. And I know he mentioned it to me before as well. Um, like you said, Mike is just one of these most helpful, nicest guys in yeah. the sport. Like, so he helped you out at nationals. Is that what you said? Oh, he in, all of uh, us. in Reno. Yeah, because I was like, hey, man, do you are you, do you think you could come over tomorrow? And he's like, well, my family's here. Like, I have That's a bunch right. of family, I think, from California. And yeah, I was like, look, man, if you can't, I understand. Like, spend time with your family. And he showed up the next day and was like, all right, I'm ready to help. And uh, so like, Mike Losa. Like, and he still that, tried to that, pay that, me for the bench shirt. And I was like, dude, this is an old bench shirt. Like, I'll give away gear. I just gave two bench shirts to a guy from South Carolina because he wanted to try equip. Like, if yeah. I had old gear that doesn't fit anymore, like, take it. Yeah. Keep the sport yeah. alive, you know? For sure. But I mean, I mean, just back to Mike, it's like, that's he, he, in, in Austin this year, he was like, he lifted and then he was spotting and loading like the next day or even the same day, next session type situation. He's always will go above and beyond for everyone. Always puts everyone else first. Yeah. Just one of the best guys in the sport. He doesn't post very much on social media. I wish he'd be on social media more so we could show him more love over there. Um, and I'll be curious. He's like an equipped lifter. We don't post. So he's perfect for this sport. We just need to pull over. He fits in, you know, that was another thing. It was like bencher, bench only people are like a little weird. Equip people are a little weird. And he's right in there with all of that. You know? yeah. 
Um, he, by the way, he's nominated in first place by 30 kilos and the 83s um, and the M1. So, I mean, can you guys just, we don't it's have an 83. Easy, can you, can you just get him in a shirt and let him just throw him <laughs> out there? We should have um, put him in on Kodama. nominations. Yeah. Or just throw him <laughs> out there against Kodama. That'd be <laughs> hilarious. Fire. Um, but yeah, like, um, yeah, him and, uh, Caden, you know, there's some studs over there, um, yeah. on that side for sure. Just to mention a couple more names. We got, J- we got James Kellerman in the sub juniors who will nominate him first by a while. John Tyler is a junior who's really super strong. So, you know, we got some good ones for sure. And then, um, we got a young classic sub junior, Amelia Gherkin on the women's yep. side. That's awesome. And then on the women's on the equip side, Tom Senchitz's wife, Claudia Nagata um, is lifting a 69 kilo class too. Um, so yeah, she's, you know, be curious to see. She's always like, she kind of runs the warm up room as well. Like when she's yeah. oh, handling Tom, um, I remember in Reno and everything, she was in there just really helping out and doing stuff. And it's like, she's a great person. So I'll probably see if I can get the two of them on the, on the podcast this week sometime yeah. um, because they're really cool personalities too. Like they've been all around the world. She's a cat one ref you know um so it's just like very cool people in the sport that you know if you go to these bench only meets and you go to um they were both in napf you know uh, so was mike rodriguez and stuff we talked about and um you know then you get to meet these really cool people and hang out with them and like see that there's these like super the whole other side of the sport that you don't see on social media yeah Um, and just really nice people love to hang out with them so we'll see if we can get them on here too yeah i think that'd be good yeah but yeah, that's uh, I appreciate that. It was a nice little mini preview show. Um, we're gonna we'll do a full on one. We won't be as good as you though. You were you were naming off people from other countries and everything. <laughs> like we'll just be like, yeah, this guy's good on our team, and that's it. But um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's really nice to to get that info from you. All right, so let's do some quick hitters. Um, yeah. and then we'll wrap this. All right. All right. So first one is, what's your day job? I am a consultant. I do mainly workforce consulting. So. A lot of talent strategy, compensation, um, you know, are we paying our people enough, um, you know, cool. job architect, it's kind of the way a company's structured internally. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a whole lot of, a whole lot of talking and PowerPoints. <laughs> nice. And you travel a lot with that, huh? Yeah, actually, that's what I got. I just got a last minute request. I, I think I got to head up to New York tomorrow night. So, um, and last wow. week I was traveling. So that makes it difficult with training, you know? Yeah. Um, we usually train on the weekends, but yeah, I'm constantly on the road and then I'll get a lull here and there where I'm in town for a few, few months. So those are always nice. Yeah, that's cool. It's always interesting for me to hear you. You're like the, I know um, we've got a couple other people on the consulting side. Um, actually, they were at both that bench uh, nationals in Reno, Chelsea Savitt, um, who won yep. national champion um, um, in the women's division. And then uh, Justin Rogers, Captain America, former, you know, army captain now yeah. is graduating from uh, rice business school with an mba and is going into consulting oh no i think he's just going into like you know maybe it's consulting i'm not sure something like that you guys are all like way above my pay grade but um it's cool to just see like the different you know powerlifting is very diverse yeah we have people from all different walks of life in powerlifting you can't just assume like someone's got a 600 pound bench that like <laughs> they're some kind of meathead or something right like it's like i like you know, yeah I, yeah. and I was, to be fair, I was in construction for like 10 years and then I went back and got my degree. Yeah. Um, and then I just started last July in consulting. So that's um, awesome, man. But it's, it's always fun whenever you tell the, you know, the partners and stuff like to, like I'm the little, you know, little show boy yeah. on the call or something like, yeah, hey, yeah. it's like 700 pounds and they're like, yeah. nice, you know, um, <laughs> so it's always kind of awkward, you know, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's nice to be a little like multifaceted, you know? Well, that's just such a cool thing. I mean, just learning as I'm meeting all the people through the podcast and then just being at every meet and and just meeting everyone and stuff, you see that we have a really diverse sport here. It's really cool. Uh, Anyone can do it. And it's just one of the things that makes powerlifting really an awesome thing is just uh, the people that we have in our sport, especially I'm obviously I'm biased towards powerlifting in America, the people that I've seen, you know, like we've got a lot of great people on our team and um, in powerlifting America. So it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a funny meme rolling around where it's like, if you're the biggest bench presser in your office, you technically own the company. Technically own the, I own <laughs> legally, our company. Legally, officially own the company. Yeah. Legally, I own, I own our company. No, I own. Yeah. yeah. I'm the CEO of a hundred thousand person company because I bench the most. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. Uh, uh, so, but yeah, you, you're definitely the biggest venture. Um, and 
the next thing I already got this one. Where do you train elite iron, right? Atlanta. Yeah. They're out in, um, actually it's Swanee just North of Atlanta, but okay. if you're in the Southeast, it's an hour from me. I still travel out there once a week. Cause if you're in the Southeast, you need to go see James, um, mm-hmm. just drop in for a day pass. He'll probably end up coaching you for free for the day and working with you. Like that's just who he is. But yeah, we got a really incredible, uh, roster out there that trains every day. And that's in North, North of Atlanta. It's like a Northern suburb or something. Yeah. So Will actually travels from South of Atlanta. It's about two hours and he comes up once a week. Um, so yeah, I used to go about an hour and a half from where I used to live. Um, everybody kind of congregates there. <laughs> How far is it from the airport? Probably. Well, in traffic, three hours, no traffic and an hour 15. <laughs> okay. So it's a good way. Is it from the airport too? Yeah. The airport's down on the South side of the city. So it's down okay. there. Okay, it's worth the sense. trip. If you're in the area, go drop in. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to make, make, make your rounds all around Atlanta and head up North. Mm-hmm. Um, where'd you grow up? So I grew up in Woodstock, Georgia, just North of the city, um, on the lake, uh, my dad in construction, you know, um, mm-hmm. so he bought a house over there and I grew up right on the lake, you know, hanging out, football, lifting bonfires on the lake. Um, and then I moved up north of there to like ball ground, like horse country area. Whenever I moved out, mm-hmm. um, lived up there for a while. And then now I live in Marietta, which is kind of in between Woodstock and Atlanta, a little closer to the city. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And um, what'd you go to school for? Where, where'd you go? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I went to Kennesaw, well, college, I went to Kennesaw state. Um, okay. I got a business degree, just business management. I almost, I was one credit away from minoring in accounting. Uh, Mm-hmm. but didn't want to stay another semester. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's kind of a smaller school. I think we're still like the third. I've heard of it. Georgia. Yeah. So Drew Cargill goes there now and he's okay. involved with their barbell club. So uh, before I graduated, I was actually able to get involved with them and coach. I think I coached like six of the kids just pro bono to kind of get them involved and was able to get one of them in a bench shirt. So I was proud about that. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Equip lifting. Yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah, I've heard of it. I mean, they must be known for like football or basketball or something, right? They just made like, I think they made the um, the March Madness. The, I'm not good with basketball, but yeah, they either. they made that this year, and they, I think they got knocked out first round. But okay, um, and then their their football program is relatively young, but I think they just had one guy drafted, so they're okay. getting there. But um, usually you'll see them on highlights because they're getting smoked by you know Georgia Tech or Georgia State and something, and you're like, oh, it's cool uniforms. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's just the way college football is, sadly, you know, they're in the, they're kind of in a pretty, between a rock and a hard place to say the least. But the Uh, Barbell Club's actually getting a little bigger. They bought some, they, after I left, of course, they invested in um, a bunch of kilo plates and they're, so they're like slowly trying to form it in to get a couple ER racks and they have their own little building on the property that's just for like it's club sports, but the power lifters are the only ones that use the weight room there. So they just started transforming it. Um, and they got a couple of good lifters there that are coming out. That's cool. And we got to get them into university nationals next year. So I'm, I'm pushing them now that drew switched, um, yeah. from the dark side over to, you know, yeah. <laughs> over to the good fed. Um, oh, yeah. But, um, he, <laughs> I, I'm hoping he'll pull some of them over too, because yeah, yeah. it's a lot more opportunity over here. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of cool international meets and stuff you can go to. Um, when you're not powerlifting, what's your idea of a good time? Oh, I like to stay busy um, okay. to, to my wife's uh, <laughs> disagreement, you know. Yeah. No, honestly, I just I like if I'm not working, consulting is a lot of hours. You know, I probably yeah. do like anywhere from 50 to 60 hours a week. No, you know, you got to get 40 billable. So that means you got to work 60 and travel um and then training right i'm driving out there so mm-hmm. when i'm not doing that i just like to chill with my wife we got a pool in the backyard hang out at the pool we got a couple dogs um low-key i used to love hunting but uh you know since i started this job and really getting into coaching and lifting i i don't have time really to go sit in the woods anymore but um yeah i don't have enough time to train and, and shoot my bow but <laughs> so um, yeah that was kind of my my other passion and i kind of had to let it slide for this phase in my life with consulting yeah well it'll be there you know that's a nice thing that's the kind of stuff you can still do into your old yeah. age and everything like have yeah fun. when i retire from from hitting big numbers i can still go hunting and coach you know yeah. then you just cut out the training part and go spend the weekends in the woods yeah, um, yeah. so and then still coach and still be at all our meets and you yep. know wrapping knees and all that 
So that's cool. Um, so if you're going on vacation, do you prefer mountains or beaches? Mountains, 100%. Nice. Yeah. That was a quick I could, Oh, so quick. But my wife's kind of opposite, right? She likes yeah. water. She's a water person. Um, paddle boarding, like swamps in Florida by herself. She doesn't care. She'll just like take off and go. Wow. Um, yeah. She's throwing like, send me pictures of alligators and stuff. And it's just like her on a paddle board. And I'm like, you're out of your mind. Wow. Um, but I like the mountains, man. I like views. I like I like trout fishing, you know, so we'll go up there and go fly fishing. Um, my dad's big into trout fishing. So that's a little less of an investment now than going hunting. You know, I don't have yeah, to train. totally. <laughs> so you don't have to train for it. Yeah. Right. Going up there and going trout fishing is always a good time. No, oh, that's awesome, man. Um, I'm the same way, by the way, mountains, like in a heartbeat um, yeah. for sure. I'm not scared of the mountains, but I'm, I'm pretty scared of the ocean. A beach though, I'm, you know, obviously it's fun. Beach is fun. Cocktails, yeah. But, oceans uh, are terrifying. Alligators. Yeah. No, no, I'm not into swamps and that kind of stuff. I'll take my chances with the bears. Yeah. Um, you can hunt them. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You can see them. <laughs> that's a key thing. You can see them coming alligators and stuff. Oh, that stuff scares me. But um, what was your first sport that you played? Uh, hockey actually i played like inline roller wow. hockey for um when i was growing up my okay dad, i mean I, I don't remember how i got into it to be honest with you i think i needed a sport and i saw it and was like that'd be fun uh, and i was a goalie and then i think i still have the record for that little rink for uh, most penalties in a season <laughs> as a goal <laughs> you're um, an animal I was quite aggressive, you know, and yeah. back then I hadn't really learned how to like hone that aggression in and, and, you know, control it. And they mentioned football to me like, Hey, you really like hitting people. You should maybe consider playing football. And so then I got into football and I loved it, you know, um, yeah, just really let that side of me out. But then, you know, so football was like my, my first real love of a sport. Yeah. But um, that's interesting in Georgia. You wouldn't think that hockey would be like the first sport that no. you played you know but it was roller hockey roller yeah okay. so it was around that time everyone switched to ice and they were trying to pull me over and uh I was like I think I'm gonna play football so nice yeah nice. I got into that probably like 13 14 a good age to get into it when my body was developed enough to where I wasn't yeah you know, getting crazy injuries young I remember there was a phase I mean we're, we're like kind of somewhat similar in age and stuff where like me and all my boys we used to play inline roller hockey all the time like that was yeah. like a very common thing I don't see it as much anymore it was a blast I would I'll go do it right now yeah um, yeah it was a blast but um all right what's your uh do you have a nickname at all nope just Austin no nickname Brad. just Austin not yeah. AB or, or anything no I don't what yeah. does James call you dumbass yeah bench, queen. bench, <laughs> bench queen. queen yeah come here bench queen oh, <laughs> lay down you know he gives me a hard time put that on your shirt bench queen i think he's like i don't respect a man that doesn't put a bar on his back and uh so he'll make me squat from time to time and i still front oh. and, you know heavy s rows and i still train legs like crazy but he always gives me shit about it so that's I think amazing. the only person close to him that doesn't squat and deadlift because yeah he's pretty yeah. big about that like I won't buy uh, my accountant better squat and deadlift. <laughs> wow, that's that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, didn't know that. That's that's a good saying to have. He doesn't read. What do you say? He doesn't respect anyone. I don't respect. That, I don't respect a man that doesn't squat and deadlift. Yeah, doesn't put a doesn't bar put, on her back. Yeah, yeah. I like that. That's a good one. Yeah. I have to remember that for the bench nationals next year. <laughs> <laughs> to tell Caden that stuff. Um, what's your favorite sport to watch, and what's your favorite football team? Yeah, college football by far. I'm a Georgia wow. fan. I will bark at you. Um, nice. no, yeah, I'm a big Georgia fan, man. And I was a Georgia fan through the Mark Rick years and through basically since I was, you know, for the past 20 years. And um, I grew up a Georgia fan. Didn't get good enough grades to go there. But, um, yeah, that's definitely my team. So it's been a good couple of years for us. <laughs> it's, yeah, man, it's been great. I mean, it's been a nice little stretch of talent um, here for, for a while. And um, yeah. exciting times, man. I, I, you know, I'm always happy for for other teams to get some dubs and get some rings and stuff like that i'm from nebraska we got five rings so it's like we've had our fill we're, we're okay oh, man, um it's nebraska. nice to, yeah so yeah sorry, man we played we guys, played george yeah you guys are the most devoted my cousin reese that i was telling you about earlier yeah. um who got me into powerlifting huge nebraska fan and like yeah they're one in eight and they still sell out every game i know it goes out there in zero degree weather to watch them lose 48 to 7 you know when they yeah. were up 7 to 0 until the fourth quarter it Yep. your fandom is like a it, it's impressive 
<laughs> we just had 60,000 people show up to the uh, spring sp- scrimmage. Um, yeah. And uh, so it's like for a team that hasn't made a bowl game in a, several years, it's pretty cool to see. But um, yeah, I love college football. And now I'm, I'm looking forward to it with the new coach, like actually paying a, t- a little more attention to it. Um, yeah. What's your favorite music genre? Hmm. Or what do you listen to the most? Probably like, not as much anymore, but Zach Bryan, whenever he was first coming around, like mm-hmm. I like that weird kind of alternative country, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. I like that a lot. I also like hip hop, but like the old school kind of throwback hip hop, like uh, mm-hmm. I won't even call it old school. It's just some people call it old school now. Yeah. You know, like 50. Um, nice. The good one, you know, but like, so I kind of like the older school three, six, you know, mm-hmm. we'll blare it in the gym and James will make me change it sometimes. Oh, that's perfect for Georgia. kids come in. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of my genre. So like weird alternative country and older hip hop. Nice. So if you had to pick one rapper, oh. who would be your favorite? Fuck, that's hard. Oh. So I got it down to no. You it's, can say I mean, a few. It has to be. It has to be big, right? Like it has to. Like that's the most. But Nas is also, and he's still doing it. Like he just dropped yeah. an album. Um, yeah, yeah. Nas is hard to beat. That's why great. it's tough. But I'd probably go with Nas. Yeah, he's probably oh. the best uh, to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean Nas, Nas. There. I mean, I was thinking you're gonna go with some Georgia names, some Big no. Boy or or. Uh, yeah, I mean, Andre or, that was kind of uh, that was kind of poppy, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then Luda fell off, and Waka Flocka Flame, and all of them were a little too new T- age for me. Ti and stuff. Yeah, there's there's a yeah, lot. Yeah, was of good Atlanta. too. Um, Atlanta's got a shit ton of good rappers. It like, does the Dirty South. Yeah, but if you're talking greatest of all time, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. then yeah, Nas has to be, in my opinion, here because lyrically, yeah, and for how long he's done it right like biggie probably could have been the best of all time like but unfortunately yeah. we have a small sample size you know totally um, totally no i feel you. i mean Nas. like anytime i see Nas on a feature or anything like that nowadays i'm just like damn this guy's just still going strong still going yeah King, i think it's king's ransom uh was the one he just released three yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's awesome and it sounds just like his old stuff like he's like he yeah. didn't change everything it's it's still just as good as it was before so yeah and probably, that's you know that's where you kind of see like some of the original talent like that is just, it's timeless. Yeah. Like, you doesn't need gimmicks and stuff. And you no. know, it, it sounds the same. Um, okay. Last one is a uh, favorite movie genre and favorite movie comedy, like just shit. I can turn my brain off with, you know, um, yeah. I like to keep pretty busy during the day. So like at night, I just want to shut it off and be stupid. Uh, mm-hmm. Probably Step Brothers. I mean, it's still so good. Any of those like dumb ones that came out around that time, like Talladega Nights, Step Brothers. Um, I mean, we still Ferrell quote fan. them. I'm a Wolf. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was it Wedding Crashers? Mom, yeah. the meatloaf. Yeah. Um, you know, so like I always quote that with my dad and shit, and uh, and everybody. My mom's like, "What are y'all talking about?" And I'm like, nah, "Don't worry about it." You know. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. does your wife like? Um, she likes. She, she'll watch comedy with me and stuff you know but yeah. she likes more I'm trying to think like movie wise it's a lot of she watches a lot of like um we'll sit down at night and watch like same thing she's very she's more successful than me by by long shot she runs like a private equity firm um oh wow yeah and so she also likes to to turn it off at night you know and yeah. so she'll watch like we'll watch dumb 30 minute shows just to like just fedge like not talk yeah. so um yeah, she gets the that. powerlifting thing. She's she didn't at first, but um, she supports the shit out of me on it. And she got me eating like I used to just eat a box of protein bars a day and call it a day. And she has me eating like real food and like soaking and taking care of myself and getting better sleep. And um, yeah, so she's actually like, oh, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. Like you're you're eating real food. She's helping me meal prep, and it's been I love that man. That's yeah. awesome. You're a team. You got to have that. Yeah definitely a team and and then she gets to you know travel around with you and stuff like hopefully she'll come down to cayman islands i think she is yeah i think we yeah. might end up staying a couple of days after because i told her like if i'm competing i'm available but if i'm coaching i'm not like my mind yeah. is you, you, competing's easy you just show up hey what do i need to do okay i'll do it yeah. but coaching is tough i mean you got to be mentally engaged and you can't mm-hmm. have any distractions so yeah i'm actually gonna go my wife and i are gonna go down a couple of days early and nice. um because I, after the meet, I'm so exhausted, you know, like physically yeah. exhausted and, and mentally too. So I'm just like, let's go down a couple of days early, do our vacation thing. And then 
she'll leave and boom, I'm right into eight days of turmoil um, <laughs> and hard work. I mean, and, and a blast, like, cause every day is like, yeah. you're going out and having fun and every day you're getting up early and getting right back to work and like putting in those hours and stuff. It's yeah. fun. It's, it's a time just goes by so fast that meets, you know, it does. It does. Yeah. World's so, last year was like that and it was over, you know? Yeah, exactly. And you know, you saw how I am and I'm like, I'm running everywhere doing all this. And so it's like, it's fun. It, um, I, I look forward to it a lot. So, well, all yeah. right, man. I uh, appreciate you coming on here and um, let's go ahead and cut this here. Thank you so much for taking the time and like giving us the mini preview and telling your story and background story and Definitely. everything and um, everything you do for the sport organizing, you know, behind the scenes, helping out with getting uh, stuff going down in Georgia and then with the assistant coaching and then head coaching on the NAPF team. So you know, I'm just lucky. I, I hitched to the right horse and James has given me some opportunities. I mean, that's really it. Well, um, you raised your hand, you volunteer, you know, you put your, you put your name in the ring and um, you know, I just can't wait to see where it goes from here, man. It's good to have good people in the sport and it's been fun getting to know you. Like we hung out a little bit in Reno too. And yeah. stuff, so, so I'm looking forward to seeing you here and then I'll see you in Cayman and everything. And maybe I'll see you in Lithuania. We'll see. Let's do it. So Sounds good. Well, thank you for what you do too, man. You're blowing this thing up and uh, your, your power lift in America is like ace in the hole, you know, <laughs> so oh, I appreciate it. Keep it I appreciate going, it. man. I appreciate it a lot. All right. Well, for everyone listening, thank you so much for tuning in to Powerlifting America podcast. And with that, we're out of here. Peace. Later.